Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the Richland Provotnikov versus Chris Algieri fight. Let me say this. You know, uh, I was raised in Queens, New York City, spent some time out on Long Island, was a city kid, went to high school in the Bronx. Um, there are few things in life I enjoy more than seeing New York fighters rise up through the ranks, uh, emerge on the world stage, right? Northern California as well, right? You always appreciate what happens in your own backyard. As much as I want to root for Chris Algieri, in this fight I'm taking Richland Provotnikov. In fact, I'm expecting Provotnikov to win big. Let me make the case. Now, these two guys are both the same age. I understand Algieri is unbeaten. But when you look through their records, you're going to see that they haven't fought remotely the same level of competition, right? Algeria's biggest fights are a fight against Mike Arenudis, and let me say, Mighty Mike has seen better days, right? Mike is really in the twilight of his career right now, and Emmanuel Taylor. Now, Taylor fought and beat a fighter who is a personal favorite, even though uh, I didn't make a video on the fight, but I was rooting for the guy, Emmanuel Taylor, who is one of the biggest victories of Chris Algieri's career, fought and beat, a guy named Victor Kao. I think if Kao had a chin, or even a semblance of a chin, he'd be one of the better fighters in the sport. He doesn't, so his fights are always compelling. Now understand, as I watched that fight, I thought K.O. was schooling Emmanuel Taylor, who does not impress me. Right? This is the tough part of the Internet. Well, after dropping Taylor, K.O. got a bit foolish, a bit full of himself. It happens to all of us. And Taylor ended up dropping him. But I thought Taylor in that fight was lethargic, Somehow, in his early 20s, Taylor seems to me to have a problem pulling the trigger. This is even though Taylor had a decorated amateur career. So he was the perfect person against whom Algeri would look great. Right? I've posted a link to the fight on my channel page. I would encourage everyone to take a look at it. More importantly, you know, Taylor, in addition to not throwing a lot of punches, stands around and watches you in a way that Richland Provotnikov simply won't. Right now, let's talk about who Provotnikov has fought. You know, Provotnikov may have just emerged on the world stage with his fights against, uh, or his fight against Timothy Bradley. But understand, he had a long history before that. Few people know it, but if you ever talk to Floyd Mayweather, not that I have, but if you've ever <laughs> listened to a Floyd Mayweather interview, whenever they ask Floyd, who was your toughest fight? Believe it or not, one of the guys Floyd always names is Emmanuel Augustus. If you go back and if you look at the Floyd Emmanuel Augustus fight, you'll see why. It's because Augustus runs red lights and is relentlessly competitive, right? So Floyd's fainting, Floyd's fainting. Augustus has taken his chances running through the feints. Augustus is a very hard guy to fight, even though Augustus loses most of his big fights. Richland Provodnikov fought Emmanuel Augustus. Let's talk about another guy he fought, Mauricio Herrera. The judges awarded Herrera with the decision, right? I personally thought Pavotnikov won the fight. But understand, Herrera is the same guy who many of you think just beat Danny Garcia in Puerto Rico. Herrera is one of boxing's more underrated technicians, 
I would argue that Mauricio Herrera is a tougher matchup than Christopher Algieri. Also, Provodnikov fought and beat Demarcus Corley. Now, longtime viewers of current middleweight champion Miguel Cotto know that when Cotto was unbeaten, Corley almost knocked him out. Right? Few people in the sport have fought as much quality opposition as Demarcus Corley. Right? I would argue that Emmanuel Augustus, Mauricio Herrera, Demarcus Corley, these guys are that in that group of fighters who we call savvy vets. They're tough matchups. When you see them, you know their opponent's going to have to earn the victory. Let's talk about Provodnikov's two biggest fights. Mike Alvarado. You know, I would argue that Mike Alvarado is better than Christopher Algieri. Right? Alvarado hits much harder than Algieri. With Alvarado, who, like Algieri, is a taller fighter, there's a threat of danger that's present every minute of every round. But yet, even with that threat of danger, Ruslan Provotnikov was able to walk him down. Let's talk about perhaps Provotnikov's best moment in the ring. It was against Timothy Bradley. Now, you know what I think. Had Bradley beaten Pacquiao in the rematch, quite frankly, he would have almost as much of a claim to this era being his as Floyd Mayweather at 147 pounds, right? Bradley was unbeaten at the time. He throws away the rematch against Manny Pacquiao, but understand, two fights against Manny Pacquiao, he goes the distance both times. Right? Can we at least agree here online that Timothy Bradley is a guy with stamina who can go the distance? He went the distance against Richland Provotnikov. Right? Understand, Bradley is much harder to fight than Chris Algieri. First of all, Bradley is shorter than Algieri. There's less body to hit. Bradley has quicker feet than Chris Algieri. For a guy like Ruslan Provotnikov, who's a slugger who wants to get up on you, right? Bradley's ability to scoot away and to protect his other body were paramount. Now, Chris Algieri moves probably above average, but he doesn't move like Timothy Bradley. He doesn't have prime Bradley's feet. There's also too much of him to hit, right? You see his upper body. I know he bends at times and he's clever with it, but the problem is he doesn't move away as well as Bradley, and he's a bigger target. He's 5'10". Now think about it. You saw Miguel Cotto against Sergio Martinez. As I said in the post-fight video, one of the best things about Cotto was how after he hit Martinez, and as Martinez kind of tried to whirl away, Cotto was on him. Cotto would take the extra step. This is after landing the big punch. And would follow Martinez after the big punch. Well, that's exactly what Cotto's trainer, Freddie Roach, has Richland Provotnikov doing right now. Keep in mind, Provotnikov was catching up to Timothy Bradley, who by his own admission had to take a knee at the end of the fight or he would have been stopped. Right? Richland Provodnikov is up on Mike Alvarado. He's not giving Alvarado breathing space. I don't expect him to give Chris Algieri breathing space. I think Provodnikov comes in to New York, Chris Algieri's backyard, and beats Chris Algieri, I believe, that a prop you need to look at 
And keep in mind, it's a title fight, so it's a 12-round fight. A prop you need to look at carefully is Rushlin Provotnikov by KO. Right now, the casinos have priced it at a minus 165. Right, Provodnikov to win is expensive. Right, it's greater than a minus 500. But if you're going to squeeze value out of this one, given the gap, and I do mean gap, between the quality of opposition that these two guys have faced, right, I'm just telling you Emmanuel Taylor as an opponent wouldn't even rate in the top five of Rushlin Provodnikov's opponents. Right? He's one of the two most significant fights Chris Algieri has had. Given the gap between the people they have faced, and given the fact that Provodnikov is very good in hunting down an opponent, and that there's an optical illusion going on with his record, because we see that Mauricio Herrera went the distance with him, and we say, well, guys can go the distance with him. Don't be fooled. Herrera went the distance with Danny Garcia. You know what I mean? You've got to be ridiculously slick to go the distance with Rishon Pavodnikov. Mike Alvarado didn't. And keep in mind, Mike Alvarado just went the distance with Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? So I like Pavodnikov, and I'm going to gamble a bit here. This is the gambling part of the net, too. I'm going to take Provodnikov by KO at a minus 165. Just understand, though, the fight's in New York, right? It's at Barclays. Chris Algieri is going to have, no doubt, a lot of support in the arena. I just think he's not going to get the support from Richelin Provodnikov. I'm going with Provodnikov by KO in what I expect to be a spirited fight. Look at the body punches. Right again, Provodnikov 5-6, Algieri 5-10. Right, Alg Algieri will start out by hiding his body. The problem is these fights are 12 rounds. Everyone hides their body for the first six minutes. Once Algieri starts straightening up, Expect Provodnikov to start landing to the body and to start hunting him down and cutting off the ring in a way in which he wasn't able to do against Timothy Bradley. Understand, Bradley's an elite fighter. Right? Bradley's an elite fighter. Right? Chris Algieri, at this point, is trying to prove to us that he belongs in the same class. He might, he might not. I'm going with Pavotnikov by KO at a minus 165. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.